Well, today is the day that we are going to get our fruit trees in the ground in our new orchard that we're planting across the property. And uh, these guys have been sitting here for about, oh, a week or so. And they're not doing too bad, but they definitely need to get in the ground. Now we wind up buying a variety and everybody's asking if we did get pollinators and all that jazz and yes we did the only thing we weren't able to get a pollinator for was one of the sweet cherries so uh yeah we're gonna have to wait until we find one but they were kind of hard to find so that's the only one we don't have one for other than that honey crisp apple we got a pear uh, I think this was a peach. Uh, we have a nice little plum tree here. Yep, there's a red gold peach and a Jonathan apple. So this one is, I don't know. We'll see how this one does because he ain't looking too, uh, ain't looking too happy. So we're going to wind up getting these things loaded up and I'm going to show you a cool little trick to water these, uh, these uh, trees where you don't have water <laughs> because where we're going i don't have a garden hose and i don't have a way to transport water out there so i'm going to show you how you're going to keep these things watered for at least a, a couple days because they require water like three or four times a week during uh during uh the time that they're trying to get established in the ground so i'm going to show you what we use but first let's get this uh loaded up Never mind the deep freeze over here. We uh, we lost the deep freeze a couple weeks ago and well, we had to empty it out. So it's gonna be real interesting to see what all that uh, deep freeze products that went in my compost pile, what, what kind of dirt that's gonna give us now. All right, so here is my secret weapon. One gallon milk jugs. Yes, that is what I'm gonna use to water those trees on my back property when I can't get out there. And uh, it will be a slow watering system. This one's already kind of uh, halfway down. I will show you the time lapse right now. This in action. So, as you can see, right here, we just put these little tiny. We put these little tiny slits in the bottom. Now, I would suggest that you smaller the better and work your way up because one over there by the fridge, the guy sitting over by himself, yeah, I put too big in there and it's lost that much water and, and probably an hour and we don't want that. We want a real slow release. So real small slits. I mean, you can, you can see them, they're, they're so tiny. I would probably do two. I did two per, and it was too much. Uh, you could try one each corner, but I think I want a real slow release, so I'm just gonna do two. And this should be hopefully enough. This one will go a little faster though. So let's get these. Uh, this one recharged up. These have not had holes punched them yet. We'll do them out there in the field because I don't want it leaking water. Also, what I like to mention, um, if you guys are gonna do this, you're going to want to fill these up to the very top these lids must be on tight now you can adjust flow by loosening the lid up because the way this works is when you cut a hole in the bottom here and it starts dripping water it's going to take what this air bubble is up top and it's going to replace it and put it in a vacuum so that vacuum is going to keep what keep this thing from just pouring out all over the ground and this is what controls your drip rate all right, load it up. Got some cold drinks because uh, we might be out there a little bit. So 
Let's uh, get this bad boy fired up. You guys can check out this sweet orchard I made. Well, it's not an orchard yet until I get something in the ground. Here it is, folks. All right, so let me explain this to you. Now, I rented that machine out and I was only able to get about oh, <laughs> this much cleared. Um, but I did cut a trail all the way around my property and then I opened up another open spot like this here on the other side of my property. Anyway, I digress. What I'm getting at here is I don't wanna to be too far off the beaten path and I wanna be able to uh, come up my path. My house is just right over there. Pull up here and take care of the orchard. So I'm gonna be planting the orchard in a position like this, in this area. This is the first part. Now, the only, I, only, I only got six trees. Reason being is because, guys, fruit trees are super expensive. Plus, um, there's like a shortage for them or something. Uh, these trees are obviously, uh, you know, pre-COVID. Should I say that dirty word? Pre-COVID, and I'm not really sure why there's a shortage now on fruit trees besides a lot of people preparing for the worst. So, saying that, we only have six for right now. That's going to be enough to get something established here and in this area. Now, the problem I'm having right now is... I wasn't able to get a forestry tool like I wanted, as you can see, and I had to use this bush hog attachment. The problem with the bush hog attachment is it doesn't get these stumps out. So this, this stuff was just completely filled, and you can see, here, you know, Mother Nature is trying to cover herself back up again. But it did a really good job on taking everything down, but when I came in here to get my, I take my tractor and I was trying to get all these, these large, large sticks and everything out that just got shredded, well, driving over it these little guys go right in my tractor tire pop the hole in my tractor tire so trying to clear all this out i wound up popping a tire and that forestry tool actually will dig down in the ground and get these little tiny shoots out it gets really bad down here but my plan was i was going to pull all this stuff down here put it in a pile bring everything down here and i was going to burn it but i wanted to put terraces in here but I can't get my tractor in here because these chutes, they just tear the tires right up. So I'm kind of forced into uh, planting around this and then letting nature take its course. And then I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to have to rent a forestry tool and then actually till this all up and scratch the ground. And then actually take the rest of my property up because this was this. Just big, thick, couldn't even walk through. If you've been a part of my channel for a while, you may have seen what my back property looked like. So, I mean, here was a trail. This was right here too. So that machine, she did a lot of work. I just gotta finish off the finish work on the ground. But I can't wait on those trees. I have to get them in the ground. Whew. <laughs> you know what? I should have thought of this, but these tree roots and this ground is super hard. And I got six of these holes to dig. Oh boy. Well, it's work, but it'll be worth it. You want to dig next hole? Nah. No. I don't want to do that. Why not? Okay, yeah, let me get a break. Uh, right. Right here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Heavy enough for this. Yeah, it's it. it's tough, ain't it? I just dug two holes. 
<laughs> and look at me, I am just wore out. You want me to go at it? Yeah. Get get through the hard stuff for you and then you can do the easy stuff? Yeah. Ah, oh, tree roots. Lovely tree roots. Two hours later. This one's super tall, so I'm glad to get this one in the ground. Because it's been a real pain in the butt with it uh, tipping over all the time on me. And I think we might be able to pull this one right out, yep. All right, those are loose. Now they say to plant trees in the months that end with R is true to an extent, but not when it comes to fruit trees. You want to plant them in early spring. Uh, avoid hot, planting them when they're hot and dry, like middle of summer when you're not getting any rain. We're, uh, we're into June right now, obviously, but we're still getting some pretty steady rains. And then with that milk drug trick, we should be, uh, should be good to go. Like I said, just a little bit. Right now, I'm just putting two holes, two slits, just like that. And that's enough to get those drips that we want. Uh, I'm putting the jug uphill because, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, this is all a downward slope, so sunny slope homestead <laughs> so we'll put it upstream so the water will run down we'll come back and move all this stuff like i said too we're not going to leave it here but we have to get a map established all done all done and the sun it went away just in the last like tree we were planting too but i had some help mm -hmm. had some uh, help with the digger help with the refreshments <laughs> but that's it in the nutshell so what i'll do is i'll come back and check on these jugs every day to actually see what the rate of drip is and if they're uh, still somewhat full i'll open them up get them to drip a little bit more and if they are empty, then I'll know that I need to go refill them. Hope this little trick helps you guys out. Uh, it's new to me. I've used it for like gardens and stuff on patios. Uh, it's a good thing to do if you're going on vacation and you don't have anybody to water your plants. Uh, it's like a little babysitter for your plants. So you also can put fertilizer in them and do slow drip fertilizer systems. Uh, this is something that's not new. It's just something that, that it's gonna work for me. This idea has been around for a long time. Oh boy. All right, here's my end. So I just have to uh, I think I got it. Starting, starting to rain. Yes, exactly what we need after planting these. Now the deer, they'll be able to jump this. 
but it's just a little level of protection to keep them from just walking in and munching all this down if they want in they'll get in but we'll be getting hair from the local barber shop or hair cutting place whatever you want to call it and uh, we'll be springing around here and keeping them out good day's work nice steady rainfall just as we got these in the ground that's going to help out i hope this continues all night long it'll be the perfect thing for these trees they're all protected looks pretty good i got about three more of these uh poultry fencing uh contractions that we could put up and run all the way down here to protect these trees uh eventually you know we're gonna have to get away from because the deer will get to them but maybe uh I'll put a trail camera out and I'll see how that hair does before I do that. Well, we want to do a whole lot more around here. We really want to establish this whole acreage, um, turn it into an orchard. We actually want to put animals down here. We want to clear this out. You know, maybe uh, we thought about getting horses, but uh, we'll be running the goats back here this summer to clear some of this stuff out. Just give them some good stuff to eat. And well, we'll keep them out of here. So that would be a good thing. I appreciate you guys watching. Hope you guys stick around and subscribe. See if this uh, all take place and unfold, but I gotta get inside before uh, we get too wet. So, see you on the next episode.